What's going on YouTube? Today I am going to, well first thank everybody, we I hit 5k or 5,000 subscribers. So that's really, that's really, really cool. Um, I started this channel kind of on accident. Well, I intentionally uploaded a video, but didn't really think much of it, but it kind of took off as people are really getting back into film. I've, I've enjoyed making videos and sharing, you know, my darkroom work and whatever knowledge I know uh, with y'all and everybody's just been amazing in the community and I hope to continue to grow and and just keep creating cool videos like this one. So I'm going to walk you through a print that I've, I've made a final print from one of the images I shot in St. Louis and I'm going to walk you through my notes and I have exactly in good notes here how I took the picture. It was with my 90 millimeter lens shot on Tri-X. I know what film holder it was in. I know the exposure, the f-stop, the development I gave it, the filter that it was on. And then on the next page, this was my first test print and that is this one right here. So this was just a 10 second straight print. It actually looked, it looked really, really good. One thing I did want to do is the shadows got a little bit dark in here. So this was with a grade one filter and the shadows got a little bit dark in here and then the sky well, the light fall off was just a little bit too much in this corner for me so there's a few uh, manipulations i did to it and i'm going to kind of walk you through exactly what i did this is just about a final work print and this is according to my notes here i went from 10 seconds to seven seconds, which opened up these shadows a bit. The contrast was really good. And for me, it's a lot easier to burn down highlights, especially with variable contrast paper. Um, so it's easier for me to burn this stuff down than it is for me to dodge this up in general. I lightened this up and I, I made sure that I liked the contrast of the bridge. That was my first step. So it was a grade one filter for seven seconds and that really opened up the shadows and everything in Try not to get a glare on this, it's kind of hard. That really opened up the shadows and everything on here and it looked really good. But then there's this wispy line of clouds in the sky that I didn't want to lose and going to seven seconds, I lost it. So I had to make a burn card and burn this down with like a zero, zero, they're the lowest contrast filter and just kind of burn that in. And then during the exposure, I dodged this uh, upper corner so you can see it's less You see it's a, it's a little bit harsh there and it's it's a little bit smoother a little bit smoother there yeah so so those are the things i did but i'm going to go ahead and, and walk you through exactly and show you exactly how i printed this i made that card and i kind of used uh, my hands a little bit to dodge it and yeah we'll uh walk you through show you what i did um but i do want to say that I, i've been loving this workflow from reciprocity failure Having all the notes right in here, I'm um, right down to my final print, has been really, really cool. And it goes from my phone, it syncs into the cloud, syncs right to my iPad, so I can keep this when I'm printing. This particular negative has taken me a couple days because like I said, the first initial print I thought looked, looked perfect. And then on further inspection, I, I felt I could open up the shadows just a little bit. And then I wanted to burn that sky down a little bit more. And in between that, I, I worked on another negative and this negative, I accidentally dropped. It hit my foot switch and it scuffed the sky right here. And you can't see it in this one, but I do have, I'll, I'll put it on the screen. I do have one where you can see it. But so I tried printing it again and I was, I was super bummed. I'm like, man, I really like this negative. And I went and dropped it and put a big scratch in it. And I'm like, oh sh crap. But when I was printing it, I noticed that it was making a white spot in the sky, not a black spot. If I had scratched the emulsion, it would make a black line in the sky, not a white line. So I looked at it closer and I have these, um, it's uh, called PEC 12. And I'll put a link in the description below. Um, if I can, I'm pretty sure I can still find it. But otherwise, if you Google it, uh, like B and H, uh, Amazon, you should be able to get it from there. But I'll try and get a link in the description. But this stuff um, cleaned that scuff off the, the emulsion side of the film. And these pads are like super soft, so you don't have to worry about scraping the film. And it did a really good job. And now the the negative prints almost as good as new. So I'm really thrilled about that. 
I've also used that stuff to clean off uh, print emulsions with a little bit less success, but it, it's probably the best thing that I know of um, other than rewashing your print. So anyway, let's jump right into this and we'll, we'll show you, I'll show you exactly how I approach this negative and printed it from start to finish. But again, the general, the general way that I approached it was to get this bridge contrast and everything in this bridge looking correct and then kind of burning down the sky in the background. The buildings in the background kind of fell where they may and it, it, looked, it just looks good um, at a couple different exposures. So I wasn't as concerned about that. And then I had to do a couple things in the foreground because there was some garbage and other things in there. So let's jump right in. So the first thing I'm gonna do, um, as always, would be to focus it and compose on the baseboard. Now this is going to be 11 and a half by nine inch print on 11 by 14 Ilford multi-grade warm tone developed in Ansco 131 to one for two minutes at roughly 74 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna go ahead and focus this up. And to focus with um, this enlarger in particular, this is a, I'm using 150 millimeter uh, Radagon lens and it's sharpest at F8. But to focus, I'm gonna open it up to 5.6 and I'm gonna put my print head on the focus setting and then turn my timer on focus. The, the lens aperture is gonna allow me to see the image really, cause it's gonna make the uh, depth of field real shallow or more shallow. And it's gonna allow me to see the grain kind of popping in and focus a little bit easier. Plus it'll be nice and bright. So according to my notes, my larger was set to 72 and a half. And I did use a 4X or a two stop ND filter to give me more time under the enlarger. Um, so I'm gonna put that to the side. There was one particular burn I did where I took it out, but for the rest of the exposures, I um, left it in. I did the base exposure with a filter one, and then I did that burn in of the sky with a zero zero filter. And I think I'm gonna try it both ways um, this time because I kind of lost a little bit um, of contrast underneath that bridge, but so we'll give it a shot. So let me get this all set up. So I'm gonna take the ND filter out here, put that on a soft cloth over on the side. And I try and keep these really clean. That looks good. So now I got that all figured out. Just gotta focus this thing up. Then I'm going to put this to the working aperture, which is F8. Put this on the starting filter, which is one, and put this to print. Now this should be ready to go. My paper. I usually like to leave the easel up too. I sell them on a seven second exposure, but because I'm going to put that ND filter in, it ends up being 28 second exposure. So I'm gonna pop that in. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fade out that sky during the base exposure. So I'm gonna set my timer, and sometimes I set my timer, sometimes I just use it as a metronome. In this case, it's easy for me to set this to 28 seconds because I'm gonna count out seven seconds. I want a quarter stop. I wanna dodge out a quarter stop of that um, sky. Let's go ahead and find my foot switch. So I'm just gonna go for it. And I can't hear it. Okay. And then we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I did that because it was a little um, bothersome to me. It was, like I said, the light fall off was too great. And it actually looked like I um, 
unintentionally uh, manipulated that. So next with that same one filter, I'm gonna hit the bottom five seconds, just a little edge burn. One, two, three, four, and five. I hit this side, but I'm gonna be careful of that top because it was a little dark already. One, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna stop it. Now I'm gonna adjust this filter to a zero zero. I'm gonna take the ND filter out and there was this little piece of trash on the bottom that I want to burn down. And I'm gonna burn that down for 20 seconds. So, let that run out. Now I'm gonna put the ND filter back in and we're gonna burn that sky down 10 seconds total but I'm gonna like I said I have this I have this jig here jig I have a burning card and so we're gonna go 10 seconds total and then I'm gonna use my hand over the top of it to kind of fade it out to that side so as soon as I get it in place that's when I'm gonna start counting so I'm gonna go like this, 1,000, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then bring that up and then kick it. There we go. And then just the bottom edge burn, which is another five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, and that is my final print. Let's throw that in the developer. That is the final print. I'm really happy with it. Again, I know it's kind of hard to see on video, um, but the bridge looks to my eye incredible. There's shadow detail throughout. There's shadow detail even in the, the garbage. I don't know, I kind of faded that out a little, but it, it's funny because I remember picking up this crate and walking around and picking up like all this trash. So I'm like, oh, I don't want that trash to be in the picture. But in hindsight, I'm glad I printed the one that I didn't manipulate the, the scene at all because like I said, it, it, it holds a little something in there too. Um, but yeah, I like how the, the sky faded off a little bit nicer. Uh, the bridge looks amazing. There's detail throughout right up in here and your eye kind of bounces back and forth in here. And that's kind of what the intention was, but I hope you found that educational, useful. A lot of times that's how I approach the print. I will go with the important things, find the contrast for that, and then gauge whether I can burn things down or, or what I have to do. But first I'll, I'll judge the contrast for the most kind of important pieces and based on what I can burn down, what I can dodge and, and things like that. So hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you in the next video.